to add anything to the agenda. We'll go through the previous action items. Um, we'll talk about whether or not we should create a separate repo for the common working group mm -hmm. and talk about focus areas for, for the upcoming release. So those okay. are kind of the areas. Is there anybody have anything to add to the agenda? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Cool. The focus areas will be great. Yeah. Yeah. We sort of need to, we need to spend more time on that probably than what we'll have time in, in this meeting because we do need, um, yeah, that's going to well, take a bit maybe more Maybe the work. other thing I would add on here is, um, yeah. I can spell. So the, the other value and risk as they've kind of gotten off the ground is they've both been kind of thinking explicitly as they are bringing metrics forward in the focus areas is to mm -hmm. really kind of start integrating the tooling earlier in the mm -hmm. process. Okay. Which I, well, I like that idea okay. as well. So, cause I think, I think tooling obviously puts pressure on thinking about mm -hmm. metrics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, okay. So let's start down the previous action items. Um, Toby was going to review the expanded document. I think he's, um, I guess he's European. He's on holiday this week. Uh, so I don't think there's any, any update there. Uh, Sean was going to create a template in the repository. I, I don't was think... I don't think that this is done yet. Is it? No, and I, I don't, okay. well, it's kind of a weird thing. I'm guessing this is the template for the detail on the metrics. Um, yeah, I think it's for the metrics pages, kind of like what we have for, mm -hmm. for DNI. Yep, so I mean, they're, they're kind of in there, in the metrics repo anyway, because some of that, those long work have um, details behind them. Yeah. Um, hi, Harshal. Hi, John. John, I actually, I didn't hit a mute fast enough. I do have an update on that organizational, uh, affiliation, do uh, document. Okay. Oh, uh, which is uh, Toby's AI, the, uh, the first one, this one? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, go, f go for it. So he and I basically had a couple of meetings uh, last week um, regarding this. And really what we're trying to do, and I can post the link for everybody to look at. Um, hang on. Uh, wait, what? No. Sorry, hold on, it's being weird. Yeah, no um, we can, what we're trying to do is right now, we're trying to ascertain like the scope of all the different metrics that are in here, um, what can be applied and what <clears throat> can't. Um, like, so the problem with this one, and I think I mentioned this before in the last meeting, there's a lot of concepts that are very high level and then there's like the low level atomic metrics so to speak and mm -hmm. what we were trying to do is figure out what's high level what's low level so that was the first part of the document on this first page and then things that might fall out of scope that have come up in conversations um and but we we're like yeah that might not be part of the um, um part of this um and the one that we identified right now is the code review fairness by organization. We're kind of going back on and forth on that because that might be just not be within the realm of this. So then um, I, it looks like, yeah. So then basically we're trying to define the model of what we're doing um, here mm -hmm. and all the different ways that we can kind of put these metrics together and come up with good questions and what those questions might be. So I think I don't, right. So I think what we are trying to do now and 
what I, I can't speak for Toby, but what I need help with is now how do we take this and punch this into a, a, an appropriate template for metrics? Because I'll be, I'll be honest, that's something I've never done before, and, and I obviously need to learn. Okay. So th that's where I am. Toby, and again, I don't want to speak for him, he might already be perfectly fine doing this, and if that's the case, that's, you know, wherever. Mm -hmm. But that's where I am on this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think what we probably need to do is start with um, – you know, so, so we have organizational affiliation as a, as a focus area. Mm -hmm. And then what we need to do is put each of the individual, decide what granularity we want to have for the individual metrics, mm -hmm. and then apply those to the template that we're going to get from um, Sean. Okay. And I think once we have the template and once we figure out, you know, exactly which, which metrics and what granularity we want, we can start putting those, putting those into, into a template. And what we can probably do is we can probably pick one metric, put it into the template, see how it works, um, learn from that one, and um, get feedback on it, and then start working on the rest of them. Okay. Because it'll probably be, you know, kind of like what we have with DNI, where we have something like, um, like event diversity as a focus area, and then we have like, five or six metrics underneath it. And okay. then each of those five or six metrics go into a template. And then in DNI, we still have more metrics within each of those pages with qualitative and quantitative ways of measuring. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the level this uh, organizational affiliation document seems to be at, where we have all these different ways to look at I don't know, maybe I'm mixing up the focus area and then that resource page. So the reason you're not sure exactly about next steps, Brian, is because it's complicated. I think it's. <laughs> oh, think good. I... <laughs> My self-esteem has just gone way up now. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it is, can... is kind of hard because, I mean, uh, Georg's right. With the diversity and inclusion, we have like, like one of the metrics is um, – uh, like within event diversity is uh, speaker diversity. So, but within that speaker diversity metric, we have kind of a dozen different ways to measure that. So are the speakers diverse across, um, across tracks? Do you have, you know, do, do, does the audience feel like the speakers are diverse? And so there are all of these things you can measure around that, what we're calling a single metric. But where you break that down, that line, is pretty subjective. Were you going to add something to that, Matt? Yeah, I just put in the chat the focus areas from DNI. This might help a little bit, too. Yeah. So and this is the structure that the other working groups are following, too, mm -hmm. Brian, is that so it sounds like in common there would be a focus area called organizational affiliation mm -hmm. and then which would really try to capture that focus area would then capture the conversation that you and Toby are having and so that capturing occurs through the identification of the individual metrics that answer specific questions Mm -hmm. So if I was to look at the document that you had, Brian, um, are there, is it those higher level metrics that you think are kind of sifting out of this conversation with you and Toby? Um, yeah, I mean, sifting out a little bit, but also just like, can they be broken down into, can they be broken down into a smaller Thing. So something like footprint of an organization in a project or ecosystem seems to be, to me, a combination of multiple smaller metrics. And I think that's okay. I think as, as was pointed out, that would be described in that detail page as to how you would actually calculate something like footprint of an organization. Right. 
And I think Georg actually kind of um, helped me click with the language just a second ago when he said quantitative versus qualitative. You know, so the argument I think would be made that these lower level ones are quantitative because they're very measurable. The higher levels might be more qualitative because they're kind of making a value call based on other numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's my understanding of what those two words mean. I'll look up a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, this document maps, maps real well. I think yeah. there might be some tweaks here and there, but. Which is right. Which is why I think Toby's farther along in this than I am. So I, okay. I don't want to has, I don't want to accidentally paint him as not knowing what's going on, but. So could I ask a question then on the affiliations data model stuff? Uh, yeah, that's probably the stuff I'm least <laughs> familiar with, but sure. It's a real, real encouraging. Yeah. Um, so the, so you have questions there. So for example, how to handle change over time. Mm -hmm. Are those, would, would that question have metrics associated with it? So for example, would that, like would footprint of an organization answer that question? I, maybe that's not the right metric in that question, but. Well, yeah, so uh, like that one I know captures, and uh, actually most of these, they, they capture what we were talking about in our back and forth in our conversation. Mm -hmm. Because um, one of the things like footprint of an organization, I made the point that like if we apply like the growth and maturity, the, the, I'm sorry, the evolution model, if we apply the evolution model to this, mm -hmm. then sure, when a project starts, you know, and I'll use us as an example, Red Hat might have all of it right? Because we mm -hmm. just launched it. Sure. But a year or two down the road, if we're still at that spot, well, then the footprint of the organization metric, the, the judging around that changes over time. Because now you're like, wait, why is Red Hat still the only player in this game? Mm -hmm. You know, why, what, you, did they intend to be? Then okay. But if they wanted more diversity, you know, then we have a problem. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we were talking about is like where in the cycle, where in the evolution cycle does, will this, you know, how does it change over time? That's what I meant. Okay. And I think the other piece to this affiliations data model is underlying all of the low level metrics that they've defined and the higher level metrics that they've defined is. Mm -hmm the ability to be able to categorize people by an organization at a specific date. Um, and so, because th this is something I spent a lot of time on, on my PhD, frankly, and all of these were things that I ran up against where you have, um, you know, I worked for, I worked for the scale factory in um, September and now I work for Pivotal and being mm -hmm. able to classify my issues and commits and whatever to the scale factory and then cut over on the day that I switched jobs um, has to be tracked, right? So it's this, how, how do you track when someone changes affiliation? And what, how do you handle mergers and affiliations? So for example, IBM acquires Red Hat. Um, when do you call those people IBM or do you, or do you continue to call them Red Hat because they're managed as a separate entity? And is that true for, for Heptio and VMware? Because when VMware acquired Heptio, they rolled everyone in. So you'd, you'd count them as VMware. But with a Red Hat IBM merger, people still call themselves Red Hat employees, but they're owned by IBM. So how do you, how do you make those decisions? And then like the, the pair programming is an issue. The, the contractors is actually a huge issue in some projects. So the Linux kernel, because so many people are on loan to places like Lenaro, for example. So someone mm -hmm. from Texas Instruments is on loan to Lenaro. Do you count mm -hmm. them as a Texas Instrument employee or a Lenaro employee? Um, and then some people have personal preferences. So some people are like, well, when I'm contributing from this email address, it's personal. This is just me. I'm a hobbyist. But when it's this other email address, I work for Red Hat. Right. And so all of these underlie how you how you classify that thing that you're measuring in all of these other metrics. 
commits right. by organization, merges reviews, all of this stuff. And, and how, do we, how do we make those decisions? Is, um, so I have two comments. One is, yeah. is your dissertation in ProQuest? Uh, no, because the University of Greenwich is terrible at getting our dissertations in, um, into the system because they've had okay. some privacy issues and some data leaks and, um, okay. I will send it to you. Can that's you send fine. it? Because if it, yeah. if it captures the conversation that you were just having there, that's super interesting. Um, yeah, I talk, a, I talk a little bit about how I made some of those decisions. Okay. Um, not frankly, all of them. I didn't, I didn't. I don't think I detailed okay, but I'd still like all to say of it, it, but it's um, buried in there somewhere. And then what if, um, what if I put an action item on for me that was to kind of take the document that Brian and Toby have and try to map it to the goal question metric approach mm -hmm. that the, the working groups use? It, I probably won't do it perfectly, but it might start kind of getting it into the form that would then be able to move into a repository. So yeah. talking about goal question metric approach, I've been sitting here for the last five minutes waiting to bring this up. The one way we can move this forward is to actually leave this document for a moment and think about the goals and questions that we have around organizational affiliation and then once we have the goals and questions, come back to this document that Toby and Ryan put together to see which metrics can help us answer those questions. Because that process then gives us the structure to represent it in the repository. And we can use, don't you think we can use this current document to help kind of frame that way of thinking around GQM? So the, the approach using this document is starting from the metric. And one thing that GQM, why we're using it is to think from the goals and met, um, questions side. Mm -hmm. So both are valid ways. I was just proposing that we use the top to bottom approach to figure out how to represent it in the repository. Well, maybe that's something you and I could work on. I'm the, what, what you're proposing, yes, we can work on. What I'm proposing, I think we can do in the working group. So, oh, I mean, either way is fine. Yeah. I don't know, did anyone else understand what I, was trying to propose. I mean, I did. I, I think so. I mean, it's similar to what we have in the DNI repository, right? We have, where we have kind of the, the metric and the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the proposal is that we spend a few minutes creating those questions in the working group now. Let's um, let's table that just for now, and if we have time, let's come back to it because we're actually still on the action items portion of the agenda. Um, and I want to make sure that we talk about the repository that all of the stuff goes in, which is one of the next agenda items. Mm -hmm. So Fair let's fun. let's maybe let's maybe come back come back to it if we have time, because I would definitely like to do that. Um, so. Um, I have not identified the other issues that should be tagged with common metrics. Um, Daniel's not here to talk about responsiveness metrics. And Matt, you were going to check with the metrics list for naming differences or add new metrics. Yeah, I just kind of constantly do this. Okay. <laughs> just kind of an ongoing thing. Okay. Um, I'll always should tell we, the... Should we delete it from the action items? Yeah, or you can. Because okay. it's just kind of... An ongoing thing. Okay. And then you were going to open a PR to include metrics from the geographic metrics discussion. Yeah, I didn't do that. Okay. Um, I will do that though. Sorry. 
but no, that's fine because let's actually wait until we decide how we want to do the repo stuff. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Which is the next agenda item, conveniently enough. So, so the question has become um, whether or not we as the common metrics working group should be working within the metrics repository or whether we should have our own repository the way that all of the other working groups do. Um, initially, when I was kind of thinking about this, um, the common metrics working group, I was thinking about it more from the standpoint of individual metrics, because when you look at that metrics page, it's just a big old list of stuff that nobody was doing. And so my thought was, let's tackle this big old list of stuff that nobody's doing. But as we discuss it more and more, we're starting to realize that a lot of these do break into focus areas, the same way a lot of the other working groups are, are handling things. And if we create focus areas just for the common metrics working group within the metrics repository, I think that's going to create confusion in the future because only some of the focus areas are in the metrics group and it's not clear that those are the ones from the common metrics repo. So the more and more I think about this, the more I think that we should probably create a common metrics repository where we create our focus areas, where we do the development of the metrics and then use that big list of metrics to help point people to the working, where they can find individual mm -hmm. metrics within the working groups. So continue to use that as, as sort of the list of a whole bunch of metrics that people can find linked off to common risk. Mm -hmm. And I think this, the more, the more I think about this, I think also with, with the addition of the other two working groups, so they've started risk at, was it risk and value? I think. Exactly. Um, I think it probably does make sense to have a common working group repository where people can find these things. What do, I, I just talked a whole bunch, just a wall of talk. Uh, what do other people think? All I was thinking, <laughs> I, agree, I agree and I agree. So <laughs> I, I think having a, a work, uh, working group, having a repository makes a lot of sense in, in my head. And, and also just from uh, people trying to get their head around how chaos works it's just, it's so simple just to say we have kind of the, the metrics list that captures everything. It's just kind of a laundry list, but then each of the working groups really does their work mm -hmm. or represents their work inside of each of their own repositories. And, and honestly too, we've had this talk earlier, you know, if how common, how common actually does the work that that doesn't really matter. I think mm -hmm. the repositories are just really helpful in, in representing that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think especially because we are looking at it more from a focus area standpoint, because we've, we've really identified um, at least three, three that I know of, and I've, I've missed a couple of the recent meetings, but uh, organizational affiliations, obviously mm -hmm. one, um, responsiveness metrics is mm -hmm. another focus yeah. area, and then we've also got kind of the geographic stuff as a focus area. So I think um, those three focus areas are a good place to start. And then we can identify more focus areas and take a more, um, uh, a similar approach to what we have in, in DNI, where we define the focus, focus areas and then put the metrics underneath them and yeah. organize things a little bit better, I think. Yeah, and it, it, it helps me a lot too, as I kind of go between each one of the working groups, mm -hmm. that they all kind of have that same look and feel, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, my, so my, my stream of, uh, consciousness thought model here, I want to jump back to one thing in the organizational affiliation metrics that I just realized I forgot to mention. Um, Brian, have you talked to, uh, people like Daniel or people uh, at Baturgia on about elephant factor? No. Okay. Because they're actually, um, doing a bunch of work to measure that. In, um, in, I don't know if they have it implemented in their tools or it's a separate tool. I remember seeing a presentation from them about how they're measuring elephant factor. And so it might be worth uh, chatting to them about, about it. So sorry, that was, that was a total uh, sidetrack from the um, common working group. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I can, 
I can mention it to Toby and see. Yeah, because I'm just thinking we've already got it. Because I think they have it implemented in a tool. Um, I just can't remember where or what. So definitely getting back to the conversation that um, Matt was talking about uh, earlier about adding to the agenda the the tools. Mm -hmm. um, that's a definite a definite tie in there. Okay, so it looks like Eric has proposed a a name for the repository yep. here in the notes um, makes sense to me which makes sense to me i just guessed because you've been doing all the typing <laughs> you're so good at taking notes i just assume that if notes are being notes are being taken that it's probably you um okay so i I don't even know if I have permissions to create repositories. I probably don't. I think you have to be a I'll do it right now. admin. Okay, cool. Um, because I'm happy to uh, to help out with the, the readme and stuff. Um, over the over the weekend. Okay. Um, anything else on the creating a new repository should um uh maybe before we create the repository um, so it's created <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just going back to all of my discussions about how we shouldn't make decisions in the um in the face to face calls about how we should uh lazy consensus the decisions on the on the mailing list so we could just say for example <laughs> <laughs> Like the one. If creator. you agree, please help fill it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, I. Th I think we've talked about this in enough enough other meetings that this is not going to cause any problems. So I'm. To be honest with you, my only like my only question on this is now that um, there are five working groups, and the GitHub repository or the GitHub organization allows for the pinning of six things. Up on top, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep. I don't I think you can pin more it. than six. Um, should we start caring about what is pinned up there? Um, yes, probably. Um, because we could um, go, I don't even know what's pinned right now. Do we tend to pin tools or do we tend to pin it's, working it's groups? Grimoire Lab and Augur are pinned. Mm -hmm. And then Metrics is pinned, mm -hmm. the big list and then dni and gmd or evolution are pinned and governance is pinned hmm. so, so how about how about we leave metrics grimola auger and governance and have no working groups on there and then to get to the working groups we will have links on the metrics repo that sounds good to me. I was going to suggest something similar because governance definitely makes sense. The metrics list definitely makes sense because people can find everything else from there. Mm -hmm. And, and realistically, the main, uh, let's see, oh, an organization doesn't have a readme. It just has repositories. That's right. Um, yeah. But it makes, it definitely makes sense. I, because the other way we could go, we could um, put the, was it five working groups? Yes. And then, and then governance or then mm -hmm. metrics. But I really like having the tools pinned. Um, okay. And so I would, I would tend to keep that approach. Okay. So I, I want to, I want to make it easier for people, easy for okay. people to find the primary tools. Okay. That's, that'll, that can, that works for me. Cool. Um, that will send to the list, but I, I agree. It's either all the working groups or none of the working groups. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd, I'd rather have the tools pinned than the okay. working groups. Okay. 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 Um, anything else on that? No, that was it. Okay. So then we have focus areas for the upcoming release. Um, I think we haven't we haven't really done a good job of uh, defining focus areas. They've sort of emerged organically um, into the the three that we talked about: organizational affiliation, um, responsiveness, and geography. So I think, given where we are right now in the working group, I think that those those three are all pretty big, and so I would 
I would tend to be inclined to just focus on those three areas for the release. Mm -hmm. And then as we go down that process, we could continue to define new focus areas that we could address in upcoming releases. But I think, Mm -hmm. I think that, that those three are probably um, more than we can tackle for, for the release. I agree. Um, And I'd recommend the, the spreadsheet that came out of DNI this week, I thought was great as a way to just start thinking through the metrics that are associated with the different focus areas. Yeah. Uh, so that one, that one was easy though, because we have so many of them mm-hmm. defined in, in DNI. So we could just look at it and it's like, mm-hmm. this one, this is mostly done. This sure. One's sort of done. This is not done at all. I think if we did that exercise right now, we'd be at everything oh. not done at all. Everything would be red. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think we, we need to get a little more definition first, and then we can get the, an The recommendation that came out of yesterday's common call was on that spreadsheet. Every working group has a tab. Sorry, you say know. that again? So that came out of yesterday's community call was that that spreadsheet that DNI put together, that every working group would have a tab on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It would help me a ton just with the like workflow Mm -hmm. to actually see the metrics that folks are interested in releasing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be good. Okay. And I agree. I mean, right now for common, they're all red (laughs) and maybe they stay red for the first release that, you know, but maybe, but if nothing else, we, um, so I, I would say that maybe the exercise is different for, for this working group, because Mm -hmm. what we need to do first, before we can even create that spreadsheet is figure out what metrics are in each of these three focus areas. And once we figure that out, um, we can pick some to focus on for the release Mm -hmm. and, and start defining those. So rather than basing, because in in DNI, we based it on which ones we've already done Mm -hmm. and the maturity level of those. And I think for, for this working group, we can do the same exercise with a focus Mm -hmm. on which ones should we, Okay. Focus on. Okay. Might make, I mean, do other people agree with that? Does that seem reasonable? It does. It sounds like what was in DNI on the spreadsheet is basically everything that's in the repository. I'm guessing it's kind of a one-to-one mapping. It is. Um, And then in this case, there's nothing to map quite yet. So (laughs) so first is building one side of the map. (laughs) Yep. We need to, we need a map. And then we can can evaluate the map. Sure. And that makes sense. Yeah, cool. Um, anything else on the release? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, so the next agenda item, Matt, was the one that you added, which was relationship with tooling. Yeah, it was. It's mostly just kind of an awareness point mm-hmm. that I I think there's a lot of value to be gained, uh, particularly in in places like common or value or risk where. There's, there's more of a clear correlation between the metrics and the tooling mm-hmm. is to really kind of constantly just keep that in, as part of the DNA of the work group or just part of the conversation that we're always thinking that way. Yeah. No, I think that's a really good point. Um, because I, I do know, for example, the organizational affiliation stuff, I know that the, um, the metrics grimoire tool set does a lot of this already. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is basically... Um, a big chunk of what Sorting Hat does, mm-hmm. for example. And I know that they have another tool or somewhere ele- they have elephant factor stuff built in there. So oh. I, I know that they're thinking about it. And I know that just because I'm more familiar with the metrics grimoire tool set, but yeah. that's one of the big values of having both um, Daniel and Sean attend these meetings. Cause Sean knows obviously the auger side, Daniel yeah. knows the metrics grimoire side. And I think you're right. I think we do definitely need to keep that, keep that in mind and make sure that we're um, constantly talking to the people who are building the tools and getting, mm-hmm. getting it kind of, you know, like top down, bottom up. So like, what do we, what do we think the metrics should be? What are we already doing? And, and mm-hmm. use those to kind of feed together. I think you're absolutely right. And I, I think too, it'll also give, like in the case of Grimoire Lab, uh, the opportunity to create panels, like a common panel. Mm-hmm. that just represents the metrics that are put forward by this, by this working group. Yeah. 
And if they're already doing it, then it's, it's really just the assembly <laughs> of those yeah. metrics into a new panel. It's, it's really actually not logistically that difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that, that's it for the agenda items other than the one that we said we would go back to, which was, um, which was Georg and the, the exercise of going through some of the questions and goals. Mm -hmm. So the way that I imagine we could do this, and I, I'm making this up as we go, so please do chime in if you have other ideas. Um, we can take the document that we have for organizational affiliation and at the top define, um, have a list of questions. So we, we just create a new section called questions. And those become the questions that we then later tie the metrics to, to see how we can answer those met questions with the metrics that defined currently in this document. Does that seem reasonable to you, Brian, since you've been the one who's been doing most of the work on this? Ask me the question again, because I got distracted over on my unbiased side conversation. <laughs> No worries. Uh, uh, I will tell you everything that I've been doing the last three weeks. I'm very sorry. Could you <laughs> nope, no worries. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one that gets caught by that. Um, no, uh, what we talked about was adding a section at the top of the organizational affili affiliation metrics document with questions about organizational affiliations. Questions about the document itself or questions that people might ask if they were a community manager? I, I'm going to ask Georg to do this. The latter. I phrased that really badly and was not at all <laughs> the latter of, of, of what Georg said. So like use cases, basically. Yeah. So if you, are you in that document, the one that you shared with us, Brian? Yes, I still am. So right at the top. Yeah. So what are the... I mean, maybe even, Eric, would you mind if I edit this? No, I don't mind. So what is the, for organizational affiliation, what's the, the overarching goal for doing this at all? Why do we care about organizational affiliation? Might be a rhetorical question to you, but. Well, I mean, I, the abstract in my head is basically that most open free and open source software projects have some kind of corporate participation and it is useful for the health of a project to know the extent of that participation. Um, that's the nickel tour, okay. but you know, that's the nickel answer. Okay. Okay. And so then below that, underneath that, I'll call it a dime tour. Oh, inflation. <laughs> underneath that dime tour. What are kind of the, the core questions that need to be answered? And you can see these. Is it about dominance of a single organization? Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, good or bad. Sure. I mean, I could easily see this being gamed to, you know, we want it all. Um, not that Red Hat does that. <clears throat> uh, so, but, but seriously, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the thing to keep in mind. You can make mind, arguments either way about it, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, the thing to keep in mind is that um, one of the things that we try to do when we define these metrics is um, not to issue any judgment. It's all, um, how do you We're define agnostic. this? Yeah, how do you define this? And then the interpretation is up to, up to, up to the project. Mm -hmm. So 
So dominance of a single organization in a project might be a good thing in some projects. It might be a bad thing in other projects. And we try not to make that judgment call of whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but we try to help people find ways to define the thing. Mm -hmm. well Just to get everybody on the same page. Yep. And since this is a shared Google Doc that we can all edit, um, I've just been typing out ideas and we Why can are you typing them at the bottom? To give you space at the top and fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> to encourage everyone to participate. Like any good community manager, Garrick is it's encouraging not participation. not how this works. Just <laughs> pop them in there so we can, you know, correct you. That's how it works. <laughs> Brian, other questions that kind of help get at this, these goals? I wasn't really planning on thinking today, so thanks for that. <laughs> um, okay, so dominant individual organizations which are engaged. Um, well, Organizational affiliation versus, and we'll have to rephrase this, organizational affiliation versus non-organizational affiliation, because that's something that's important too, because this, these metrics can help identify drive-by contributors, um, especially drive-by volunteer contributors who may or may not um, you know, th those those are the the neutrinos in the equation that are really hard to identify. Um, Do you care about who the organizational drive-by contributors are? Maybe because if I've got you know if I've got somebody in Red Hat that came in and you know did something really useful, but then they're just and we have this even in in our company, you know, people who just come in, look at something, and say, "Oh yeah, I know how to fix that," and they do it, and then they leave. Okay. You know, and, and those are actually harder to track than outside drive bys because they're just one more red hat dot com affiliation in the mix. So, you know, this gets into <coughs> yeah, who's coming in and who's staying, basically. Okay. Um, leadership yep. positions um, within the organization, do they follow hierarchical? That's a good one. Do you care about um, organizations that seem to be kind of partners? So there seems to be a, a the relationship between organizations? Yeah, Just I mean. Because... Go ahead. Uh, I guess I was gonna say just because they're present you know, if, if two are really dominating, just a thought. No, oh, I mean, that's a good point. Well, because but, I, I think about that from a pivotal VMware standpoint. So you look at our work in Kubernetes and we have joint projects. So we have, mm -hmm. we have joint Kubernetes projects with VMware where we're both working on them and both contributing back into the open source mm -hmm. upstream project. And so even though it's two separate companies making commits, um, some of the, some of it's related. Mm-hmm. So maybe, yeah, it's a good question. Well, I mean, see, because this is where we get into things that I'm not sure we should measure for community health because, like, um, you know, there's an argument to be made, like, I happen to know there's a certain company that thinks they're all that with OpenStack, but if you actually go in there and look at their participation in that project, it is very low. Um you know, and that so you could use the you could use this kind of affiliation to determine who's active in what you know consortium or organization or mega project. But I'm a little hesitant to write that down because that one's probably very gameable and also not positive. This. Um, let's see. Yeah, who has majority, who has plurality? Um, I don't know how to put that.
the contributions over time. So I think this is a pretty good yeah. starter list. From my read of it. Um, <clears throat> identification of organizations that are, I'm not sure, and if this is not useful, then let me know, that are magnets. <laughs> like, I'm not sure, I don't know if it would be useful, but like, you know, over time, if a given organization is dominant in a large project, they're going to tend to attract new developers. And I'm wondering if that would be useful at all to see that migration move. Like if everybody decided that Google was the only place to really work on Kubernetes, that's where all the action was and that's where all the innovation was. Would it be useful for communities to sort of see that migration moving and and be able to do something about it? See, I'm not sure that's actionable, so. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Maybe um, the, the issue with it that I see is that it spans multiple communities mm -hmm. you know, to make out magnets as they move between communities. Well, I think it's more useful in the opposite sense. Like, who's losing? Like, who are the anti-magnets? Because clearly then that would be an identifier for a community manager to say, wow, we are really losing a lot of people who used to work for us, and now they're working for so-and-so or anybody. Why is that? What are we doing wrong? You know, and then that becomes... That could be a corporate question or a community question, you know, depending on who the stewards are. I think maybe those this might be sort of a, a subset of of this one. What are the impact of job changes, organization right. affiliation changes on the project? Right. That would be the mega question. Yeah. That referring to what you were talking about earlier, Don? Like as a person changes job? Well, it's what, uh, what Brian was just talking about, which is, mm -hmm. um, so when I, when I think about which organizations are magnets and which organizations are anti-magnets, what this is really showing is um, people leaving one organization and joining another so that they can work on the cool, pro the cool company within the project as opposed to working on the... Right. And I, I also think of this, so there, there are other, other pieces of, of this that, that impact this. So things like, um, uh, I'm just going to write down layoffs while, while I talk about this. So for example, Nokia laid off a whole bunch of their open source developers when they went all in on Microsoft and they, they laid off a bunch of kernel developers. And mm -hmm. we actually sent a team to fly to Finland on zero notice, and they flew in, opened a Helsinki office, and hired as many of those people as we possibly could. And so you can see this in the data. When you look at Linux kernel job change data, you can see the, the Nokia migration to Intel. And, um, and there are a few others like that. There was a, a big layoff at Texas Instruments, I think. And a lot of those people, I forget what company they went to. But you see these, like, like these job change migrations that, that happen as a result of... Really fascinating. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and I noticed the Intel Nokia one just as a side effect as I was going through the data. I was like, oh, I remember when that happened. Well, that was the whole because Migo was, thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was right after Migo. They'd killed Migo. Gone mm -hmm. all in on Windows and just, yeah, just uh, upended their open source teams. And we, as a, we Intel at the time, um, benefited from that in a well, serious way. Yeah. And I was thinking, I actually figured out a way to articulate this. I would think that an intra -pro if there was a pattern of intra-project organizational switches, so you had a bunch of people leaving company A and going to company B, but they were still working on the same project. And if you then kind of track that with, 
like did their level of contributions go up you know when they went to co company b mm -hmm. that might tell us that i mean it could always be that company b is paying more right and it's a it's a purely fiscal decision but if they're if they're if their contributions go up, then you got to wonder, is there a problem in the environment of company A, who is also working with your project, that isn't aligning as well with your project's overall goals or environment or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and then that might give you a little ammunition to kind of gently go back to company A and say, hey, is everything okay over there? We've noticed this. Mm -hmm. it, I, and I'm really probably getting way down into the weeds, but I feel like that could be a, a job change thing to measure. Yeah. I feel like the job change stuff is particularly fascinating. This is a part of my, uh, it never ended up in the dissertation at all, but it's something I spent a lot of time looking at and kind yeah. of playing around with some of the data just because I found it so fascinating. That right. is super fascinating. Just listening to the two of you talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it, 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 well, oh, well, well, that's just weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're fascinating, Brian. We you are. are. You are. I'm just, I'm just a straight man. <laughs> but no, seriously, yeah. And, and it, I, I think that there's a lot that you could delve into this. And, and it, it does kind of maybe come down to maybe just pay. But then you get into, okay, how does fiscal motivation affect your project? Huh. You know, are people buying contributions? You know? Likely. And then we could go, you know, talk to Bradley Kuhn and he would probably tell us yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for what it's worth, I do have a Amigo luggage tag. Oh my God. Oh, nice. I do too. I actually, I still use it. It's that silver it's like, one? Yeah, yeah. It's just all beat up and just like <laughs> falling apart because mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is so sad. I am sad now. I, I no, actually, what I metal. Moved, when I moved to London, I found a, a stack of Mego stickers that I've been hoarding. But if anybody wants one, let me know. The next time we're at a conference together, let me know and I'll bring one for you. That is old school stuff. Yeah, we know it our Christmas present. It is. It's Don totally. Me. It's totally old school. I'm gonna let's see. No, if I'm all connected to stuff. Oh, and it's on the part that's connected. It's connected to a hard drive. I can't. I can't show you. I was gonna show you the Mego sticker. Oh yeah. Did it's you move the, the camera? It's on the corner. I can't. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> right here. It's the fist bump guy, or the chest bump guys. I see, I see it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So I have a whole, like, whole stack of this. Sorry, I feel like, all right, we have two minutes left, and I feel like I've... Uh, That's a good way to end. <laughs> yeah, let's just end there. <laughs> No, I'm very, Please take very that good. into minutes, by the way. I want, <laughs> I want it noted that we saw the old Migos sad stickers. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, I, I think that this is definitely, though, uh, so I love this exercise. Thank you. Thank you, Gayrog. Um, I think it still needs some work. I suspect that if we look down through this, this big list of stuff, we'll find some some duplicates, some gaps, maybe some things mm -hmm. that we can bucket under other things like the job changes. Um, so I think maybe maybe in the minutes, let's give ourselves an action item to to maybe revisit this discussion and have another. Have another yeah. Well, um, I feel like I need to send an email to Toby and said, "Hey, we went into the document today." So. <laughs> So he won't be surprised. Yeah, I'll create a sub sub AI. Um, we can just add a comment and tag him. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I created an AI for everybody to look at the organizational affiliation questions again in another meeting. I need to quickly look at my calendar. I, sus I think actually that I, so the next meeting is on the second. Uh, no, I will be here. Okay, no worries. Okay. Um, 
So I will be. Go yeah, ahead. I will very likely not be here because I will be driving my daughter's stuff across country. She graduates from Pepperdine next weekend, and then we're driving her home. So nice. Yeah. So unless I can find some Wi-Fi in the middle of Kansas or Nebraska or something. <laughs> and you there need is a break Omaha. from the drive. There is always Omaha, and I yeah. might be going through Omaha, Matt. And I'll let you know if I am. For sure. You, you could like in person, like sit in Matt's office with Matt and be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, you just sit in there, and you guys will know, not know what's happening. <laughs> All right, all right, so now we are officially over time. Um, thank you all. This was a, a fun meeting. I hope also a productive one. All right. Good thank to you. see everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.